This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to Digital Perspectives, everybody. I'm Brad Kimes. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley above at the top of the screen and everything we're talking about here. Look, if you're going to be in crypto, don't show them what you hold. If you want to show them that you're in crypto, get some great crypto merch, crypto life, crypto merch only here, right here on the store. And I just want to show you the links in the description, guys. Say it with your merch, not with your wallet. Don't show them your custody. Don't show them your holdings. None of that. Show them through your merch. Look at this stuff. Really, really great stuff here for you guys. I haven't talked about it in a while because I know we've all been experiencing, you know, an impact because of the pandemic. Hopefully we're all starting to come out of this a bit. And we know that crypto is getting ready to move. A lot of people are going to be asking a lot of questions. I think this is the best icebreaker and the best way to go about it. Okay, so look, we're going to briefly go over some news today. I'm going to do a little highlights and kind of just caption everything that's happening. And then I want to jump into an article about the major banks wanting more clarity from the OCC in several different areas when it comes to crypto and custody. So we're going to get into that in just a second. Let's go over this uh, overview here. We'll start right here. Shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf, DJ Peter Vass, and Michael Val, five links, and so many others out here that send things every single day and post things every single day. You all are just really a big part of this community. So appreciate everything you guys do. Okay, let's get this thing going here. So first we're starting with this. Uh, is it Resta Chain uh, combines the power of security matters? Uh, quantum crowd with the physical marker that enables the secure sharing of transactional data with improving sorting, tracing, and monitoring plastics uh, throughout the value chain. This, there's things just popping off so much. I wanted to do a highlight today of what's going on and then get down into that That uh, need. It's really, a, it expresses an incredible need for more clarity from the OCC. So Beijing selects Hong Kong's Greater Bay Area as the first market to deploy uh, their trial digital currency. We're going to keep an eye on that. Recently had the um, Back to the Future with uh, David Schwartz and Stefan Thomas, where they both talked about their early days in the BTC world and then how they moved to where they are now. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I haven't heard the whole thing, but I need to sit down and listen to it. Shout out to them. Uh, Venezuela's mayor agreed to join government's plan to expand the adoption of cryptocurrency and petrodollar, right, for themselves. Uh, Venezuela may soon be collecting cryptocurrencies taxes. Interesting. I don't know if you guys remember, but Venezuela had a huge dollar collapse, so they are in need of a solution. There is no doubt about it. Okay. Ripple partner PNC said they're interested in providing crypto custody and other services to clients. Here's where it's exciting, and this is exactly what we're going to drill down on here in just a second. U.S. banks want the U.S. OCC to clarify how they can provide cryptocurrency services, hinting that the financial institutions are taking crypto seriously. And they really are. And wait till you see what's what's going on here. Uh, OK, so this I actually checked out. Um, former Ripple CTO Stephen Thomas wanted to implement smart contracts on the XRP ledger in the past when it was first created, but it, it didn't work out. And I think we've heard, even heard Brad Garlinghouse talk about maybe we should have gone with smart contracts first, but they didn't. And, you know, obviously they're going to be able to work it into the system. So DJ Peter Vass Coinbase hires XLift VP of engineering as it ramps towards IPO. Now, I read a great article about the idea of them IPOing and talking about doing a direct listing instead of like a fundraised IPO. Now, that is a pretty interesting thing, and I'll probably do a separate video just on that as well in the next day or so because there are some really big implications i believe if you know i understand the direct listing properly of the way they could just basically offer the shares directly out to all of us which i think could have huge implications and i think when a company of that size they may be able to really get a huge advantage from that versus a fundraise so We'll see what happens there. So we'll keep an eye on that. Facebook announces a new financial team for online payments. Well, welcome to the party. 
Yeah, I think we all know that the white paper that they had was really a no-go before it even started. And I think now they're starting to find their way into a place where it's going to be viable. They will get it together. They will be able to offer something. And it's going to be hugely beneficial at the end of the day because of how many billions of people are on Facebook. It will be a benefit, however they fit in. Okay, one little update here from uh, Flair. That's, and this is really dealing with the fact that they said they're ut- offering a utility fork and not just like a regular hard fork. It says right here is an update. There's no current date for the utility fork. It is in development. Both the fork and the snapshot that is based on will be very well telegraphed ahead of time. There will be ample time and clear mechanisms for everyone that wants to participate to do so. So we'll keep you posted on that as well. Guys, I will be sitting down with none other than Mickey B. Fresh later today. We are going to jump into the Flare and Spark token, the Flare Network, and many, many other things. I think you guys are going to want to see this video when it comes out. Okay, now let's get into this Following OCC letters, some U.S. banks appear open to providing crypto services. This is a really great write-up, guys. And I want to go down through every bit of this because I believe what we're seeing here through their public comments back to the OCC, their open concerns, are going to really start to show us exactly what this federal charter is going to address. So let's go ahead and get started into this. Multiple national banks responded to the OCC's June advance notice of proposed rulemaking, ANPR, which asked the general public to weigh in before August 3rd on how cryptocurrencies and other fintech tools might be used in the financial sector. Notably, several banks, including U.S. Bank and PNC, indicated they may might be interested in actually providing crypto custody and other services to customers. The responses by just under a dozen banks among the total of 89 submissions from think tanks, excuse me, policy advocates, crypto startups and other entities represent one of the strongest signs yet that traditional financial institutions view still nascent crypto space as a legitimate asset class. That is probably one of the most important comments or statements inside of this article that they still they see it as a legitimate asset class so we're going into this thing and it is exciting the response contrasts sharply with an open letter sent by acting comptroller with uh of currency brian brooks the letter which opposed a narrow payments charter for fintech's company was signed by many of the same respondents and sent to the occ on july 29th fresh guidance from the occ may help provide the necessary legal comfort for banks to provide crypto native analogs to traditional bank services juan serez coinbase's vice president and general counsel for enterprise Although these services such as borrowing, lending, and remittances are permissible activities for national banks, there remains some uncertainty as to whether the provisions of these services using cryptocurrencies is authorized, he said. Pete Najrajran, uh, and I'm sorry if I mess his name up, Chief Revenue Officer at BitGo told Coindesk at AMPR's very existence is exciting as it's a frankly inevitable, inevitable step in maturing of this ecosystem and that is really what we're talking about here it really is an inevitable step to maturing this ecosystem and it's coming and that i tell you this is massive dominic venturo chief digital officer at u.s national or bank u.s bank national association perhaps went further in his response writing that the occ and other banking regulators should issue guidance around cryptocurrency market as well as expectations for services conducted on distributed ledger technology here we go and this addresses to me in that statement the liability on the rails on those payment rails on which these things are moving right At what point when I let it go, am I no longer accountable and the receiver is, right? At what point is the liability transfer from me to you? These are all questions that have to be very, very uh, clearly answered. U.S. banks 
Our U.S. bank does not have a position on the role of cryptocurrency should undertake in the financial services sector, but merely seeks additional clarity to service the cryptocurrency market as it currently structured or may be structured in the future, he wrote. The OCC should work with the other federal regulators to clarify how cryptocurrencies and digital assets are treated, Ventura wrote. Specifically, he suggested the OCC differentiate between utility tokens, stable coins, and exchange tokens, clarify the requirements for providing custody services, cross-border restrictions, and the extent consensus rules must be a part of a transaction. What he's asking for here is clarity in the way of designation, classification. What is the asset that I have in, in, on my book right now? Is this a stable coin? Is this a utility coin? What is it, right? <laughs> this, this is so exciting to me because, for one, it means we have to have an out-and-out -out designation or classification of XRP without question. It is forcing that narrative to come clear, and that is exciting to me. You know, the other things about this is, you know, outside of just getting the clarity for XRP is getting the clarity for the space. And the only way to do that is to understand what these things are. And then we can clearly understand what the tax implication on these assets are. And there's the other final piece to the puzzle needs to fall into place. Okay, PNC's head of technology and innovation, Steve Van White, commented that the OCC should continue to reinforce the national bank should take a risk-based approach in reviewing new products, but should not have risk elimination as its ultimate goal. Well said. Okay, all banking activities, including deposits, taking, and lending, involve risk, and the implementation of new technologies necessarily will involve some degree of risk. A supervision framework that is focused only on preventing risk will almost by necessity prevent responsible, responsible innovation and the implementation of new technologies by national banks. Well said. They have such a great viewpoint. Generally speaking, everybody here wants to see this happen in the banking sector. But they want to understand, where's my risk? And I'm not saying I have to have no risk, right? I, I tell you, this is, it's so positive because this isn't people just in the crypto space talking about this. This is, this is a response to the OCC from the banking side. And they're all just saying, hey, give me better rules to be on the field and I'm going to suit up and come out here on the field. So, all right, user protections for consumers. Now, this is important and we haven't seen this yet, right? Financial institutions, OCC rulemaking rule uh, should have some focus on consumer protections. Several of the responses indicated banks might even need to be encouraged to use privacy enhancing cryptocurrency technologies. Coin Center's Director of Research, Peter Van Valkenburg. Um, let's see. He said banks are obligated to both protect their customers' privacy as well as surveil and report activities it may, that may break the law. In his view, they can do so effectively with privacy coins and other tools. Banks can conduct know-your-customer checks and otherwise identify their users to comply with relevant laws before providing privacy settings by using mixers or other tools to facilitate crypto transactions. And this is where things like chain analysis comes in, right? And they can help provide that service for them. Okay, Goldman Sachs eyes on token as uh, banks appoint new head of digital assets. Yeah, don't forget about that. That's a pretty good article too. They should perform heightened due diligence in any payments their customers initiate or receive if either amount involved are substantial or a suspicious pattern of behavior has emerged with respect to several smaller transactions. Tina Wu, Senior Managing Counsel for Regulator Affairs at MasterCard, also suggested consumer protection rules by the OCC would be helpful addressing both security and privacy concerns. We believe cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology hold the potential to enhance operational resiliency, improve aud auditability, and enable new functionalities. And that's absolutely true. Based on the confidence, not all submissions were positive. Some expressed concerns about relaxing regulations. Cornell Law School professor Daniel Allray, uh, or Dan Allray, excuse me, Wharton Financial Institution senior senator 
Center senior, excuse me, fellow James McAndrews and Columbia Law School academic fellow lecturer Lev Menard wrote that OCC's AMPR has two major flaws, an excess focus on finding ways to relax existing rules and its narrow focus in updating the regulatory framework for national banks and savings association. Menard is an advocate for digital dollar structure and supported efforts to introduce a digital dollar in multiple congressional bills earlier this year. Money and payment systems are based on confidence, the three wrote. In this case, the national banking system, this confidence stems from highly sophisticated regulatory frameworks that govern national banks. These regulatory frameworks include federal deposits, deposit insurance, access to central bank liquidity, support, and special resolution regime. Now, let me read this last part. In other words, individuals trust banks because a strict regulatory regime that lets them deposit their funds secure in the knowledge their money is safeguarded. And that's absolutely true. And in this instance, we also know that Brian Brooks has absolutely expressed that he wants to open up FDIC insurance to these virtual asset service providers. So again, as we move closer to seeing this federal charter come out in the fall, I think all of this that's being said here is going to absolutely be addressed and there's going to be the clarity that we've never seen to this level that they're talking about. And if they get the clarity from Brian Brooks, which I absolutely have complete faith that Brian Brooks is going to give them what they need. I mean, what does this space look like? What does this space look like? When he answers all of these questions and concerns to the banking sector and issues a federal charter that addresses every bit of this right here, what does crypto look like to you? I just, I can't even imagine. It looks bigger than I ever could have thought, to be honest. Okay. Let's go right here to uh, the AMPR notes that many new financial technologies exist because newly created institutions and platforms try to perform banking functions but aren't regulated like traditional banks. And that's what they're looking to solve here with the federal charter. The OCC should consider whether it makes more sense to strengthen regulations around non-bank financial institutions, which the letter refers to as shadow payment systems. New financial technology firms that sprung up in recent years, including stablecoin issues, issuers and companies like PayPal, operate in murky regulatory environment that require far fewer protections than banks face. I think this comes down to a level playing field, right? And I think that level playing field, if we understand it correctly, as to Brian Brooks's vision, really means to bring the PayPals and the stablecoins into the same level of compliance as the banking system, as it should be. I don't see why it should. Okay, let's keep going here. The OCC should recommend that Congress enact new legislation to address the shortcomings in our existing regulatory framework. Such legislation can be quite simple, they wrote. Okay, and, and I agree. Banks that don't necessarily have to provide crypto services directly, BitGo, which has offered custody services for over a year, believes that the banks should be able to tap sub-custodians to provide these services. Now, here's, an, here's where we're talking about third-party uh, uh, connections. So the bank could offer digital custody to its customers, but I may use PolySign or Standard Trust or some other company to provide that custody, right? The banks may end up offering, you can buy your crypto here, but they may use a third party to do so. So there may be a third party uh, banking services platform that allows customers to plug and play or allows the, the customer to plug and play as well as the banks to play plug and play on the backside. And then you can offer the buy and sell side to the to your customer at a bank. But the mitigated risk and whatever happens on that buy and sell side of crypto or stable coins is on that third party provider. So we'll have to see what goes on there. At the end of the day here, the reason I wanted to cover this is because these open letters are showing me what is left to bring the banks the rest of the way to our side into this game. It is clear from the way they're writing and the way they're responding, they want to be in this thing in a big, very big way. 
and I think that's really exciting. So, guys, we'll keep an eye on this, and there's a lot of news going on. Don't forget, Mickey B. Fresh will be on later today on the show. I will release that in the afternoon video. I cannot wait to sit down and talk with him. And remember, uh, we are in historic times. We really are. Grayscale's gone full bore with mainstream media advertising for the investment funds. Crypto is here, and it's here to stay, and it only gets bigger. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Hit the like and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.